Welcome everyone to JavaScript Programming Language Course for Beginners. This video is an introduction to JavaScript. You will also see the source and reference for this video. I hope you'll be able to follow along this entire JavaScript course. Coming up next are the prerequisites. In the we have the map server, Apache server, Sublime Text Editor, the Console tab, HTDocs folder, and localhost 8888. These applications and folders should be active in your machine at the background. As you watch this video, please bear in mind about our ESLRs. These are right thought, right communication, right attitude, right conduct, and right lifestyle. This is section 2.2, variable types, part 2. It covers all six main variable types and the difference between primitives and object. In this particular slide, we'll continue to discuss about the variable type functions. The example we're using is the same function from the previous year. And if we're creating a function like this, var say hi, and then an anonymous function. That's why we need a semicolon at the end. So this is just like saying var say hi equals function equals var say hi equals 5 or vice var say hi equals hi. Except instead of putting a number or a string, we're putting a function. So that would be var say hi equals function. This is one interesting thing about JavaScript. If you've done programming languages before and other languages, it might make you uncomfortable to know that functions can be passed around as variables like anything else can be. There are several languages where functions are completely different kind of thing. They're not an object, nor they're something that you can store to a variable and treat just like any other variable. So if we're into it, then let's give it a try. Save Sublime Text, refresh browser, and run the console, and type say hi. And of course, we get an alert hi. If we look at the actual object using dir, so it says dir say hi, and it will say hi undefined we can see that this is also an object. So its prototype is an object. Ultimately, what conclusion can we come up to? Basically speaking, objects are objects, arrays are objects, and functions are objects. Now, objects are ultimately at their core. So things that can have keys with values. When the key is a value like Fido or 5 or 2, we call that a property. So my dog name is a property. When we have a key with a value, which is a function, we call these methods. So objects are things that can have properties or method. We can add custom methods into arrays or even to functions because at the very core they are objects, just like my dog variable. Now some of you might wonder, what about strings? Because you can do things with strings. We can do something like this. Take a look. My name dot to uppercase. This looks suspiciously like a method, but because strings are primitives like booleans and numbers, they're not supposed to have methods. Primitives are supposed to be raw, fast, and optimized values, not objects. It turns out the JavaScript engine will auto actually convert primitives 
into objects whenever it needs to. So in here, if we type my name, it just sped out the primitive value. While in here, my name dot to uppercase, it took that primitive to convert to a string object and then run this method on the string method. Now let's have a quick review. The three different kinds of primitive values are strings, numbers, and booleans. We also have objects, arrays, and functions at their core are actually objects. Arrays provide a very good interface for storing list of things, and functions provide ways of creating functionality. Of course, if we need to do something about primitives like my name string, JavaScript will automatically convert that primitive value into an object and will give it the proper methods. So the six core variable types, we have numbers, booleans, strings, objects, arrays, and functions. Let's get familiar with all of them and we'll be seeing with a lot of all six of them. For our web quest, we will use the internet to search and read more about JavaScript variable types. And for today's classwork, please log in to your Google Classroom and answer module two. Before I will end this video, I hope that you learned something about variable types in JavaScript. Thank you for watching this video.